Donald Trump is taking credit for the market rally. He says, and I'm quoting now, my polls against Biden are so good that investors are projecting that I will win and that will, dri and that will drive up the market up. David Barnston is with me and he's itching to have a go at that. What do you say? Well, I just want to be as nonpartisan or bipartisan as I can be here because it's the historically accurate reality. <coughs> President Trump is, is right to be spinning it from a campaign standpoint, but of course it isn't rooted to reality. Stocks really move because of corporate profits. Exxon and Chevron's profits are up huge in the Biden administration. Does anyone believe that's because of President Biden? Is he a pro-energy president? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Amazon and Apple had record profits when President Trump was president. Was he a pro-big tech president? I don't think so. Profits drive stocks. Our national idolatry of politics causes us to say that the president controls the stock market, the economy, apparently sometimes the Super Bowl. So it just isn't true. And, and it's OK. It's what well, everybody does it. But I just think we have to stop giving the president all the credit and all the blame. So it's not the policy <clears throat> of Trump or Biden that's moving the market. It's just the politics of it. The policies have an impact, but they are they impact profits. But the Fed is a much bigger factor. Sentiment in the economy is a big factor. But there's just too many facts over history that move stocks up or down that are unrelated to public policy. If Biden won a second term, what would the market do? It would depend what happened in the House and the Senate. So if Biden wins the presidency and the Republicans kept, took over the Senate, then I think the market likes gridlock. It's, it's, it, it, uh, uh, in 2020, Biden won the presidency and the Democrats won the Senate. Markets were concerned, but it was still a moderate enough Senate with a uh, mansion and cinema. They weren't able to get some of their extreme stuff done. So the nuances matter here, Stuart. If Trump wins in November uh -huh. and the Republicans take the Senate, what does the market do? Then I would think you'd have a good rally around small business optimism. I think that President Trump's focus on deregulation or pro-energy is good for small business. He's going to threaten big tariffs and things, and the market's going to have to wonder how that plays out. But I actually think a lot of the tariffs he threatens wouldn't really happen. He uses them as a negotiating ploy. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. All right, David, stay there, please. Going to turn to the Case Schiller report on home prices. We have the numbers. But please Please remember, these numbers are from November of last year, so they're two months old. What do we have here? Prices rose 5.4% on an annual basis. A huge caveat. These are prices off of almost no volume. Nothing sold. Mm. So even though those are the reported prices, transactions are so down, it's really distorted. All right. Thank you, David. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another f war. Yeah, exactly. Not sure what she was referring to it exactly. It was out of context for the soundbite that she was talking to, but she was laughing, you know, and she later apologized to viewers. So maybe there is some frustration with how this president is doing among the people that like him the most. Speak. Well, she's a media professional. I'm just a finance guy. And even I know to keep my mouth shut with this microphone. Aww, no well. matter what, I just assume someone's hearing something. We all make mistakes yes, on occasion. We, we do here have. also. Uh. <laughs> Domestic demand is softening for some of the airlines. Where is their profit? Not profitable. Reported a loss, looking to cut costs. And now they expect their first quarter revenue to fall by 9%. Ouch. You got a comment on that? I sure do. I'll have other airlines are reporting that travelers are up. Every flight I'm on is sold out. Uh, I think that it's very interesting in the airline business how things are bad when the economy is good and things are bad when the economy is bad. This is the worst sector I've ever seen to invest in. Airlines. Yeah, it is. American it is. Airlines is cutting about 600 jobs. Mm. The people that help you rebook your flights and find your lost luggage. Yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> oh, dear, really? <laughs> what could go wrong? Then we have Pfizer. I, I, they reported earlier. Yeah. They're up two and a half percent. Well, look at that. Surprise. Quarterly profit on demand for, I'm going to emphasize this, demand for COVID vaccines and treatments bigger than they expected. Not saying the numbers were great, but they were guiding pretty low. And it's surprised. Uh, yes. You know, you know what uh, Pfizer stock was in 1998? Uh, it was $28. <laughs> Is that right? I, yeah. I'm being 100% literal. So I just want to congratulate them on 25 years of a flat stock. We always said that at the height of COVID, Moderna would go way up in a big way, and Pfizer was always pretty static. It was. It was. Yeah. That's right. 
Uh, you're sarcastic today, I can tell. Uh, UPS, I saw a report earlier that they were dropping 12,000 jobs. Yeah. That's accurate, right? In their negotiations with the Teamsters over the summer, they lost market share. Quarterly revenue missed again for the sixth consecutive quarter. So the, Teamster, the Teamsters union got raises for people, and then 12,000 people lose their job. And that's good for labor? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't it's even know. It's a contradiction, isn't it? Yes. There you go. Google and Microsoft, as we've been saying we all go. morning, they report after the bell today. Start with Microsoft. What are you expecting? Or do um, it is expected to grow at almost a 28% rate. If they, you know, come in at 25%, Wall Street is very demanding, and they might sell the stock. I don't think Wall Street's demanding. I think that the stock price is at 39 times earnings and 38 times forward earnings. So it's just the math of the valuation that if they don't have a bigger number than the astronomical number expected, it, the stock has to sell off because of how expensive it is. That, you, you're, in, you're not interested in big tech companies. Yeah, I'm just not interested dividends. in stocks that are trading at 40 times future earnings. <laughs> okay. That's, that's my personal opinion. Well, Show me Walmart, please, because as I understand it, uh, store, store managers uh, got a nice raise, and some of them may earn a small fortune. Am I right? Almost half a million dollars. $404,000 per year for a super center store manager at Walmart. I, I think that's a win-win. It's a fine thing. Have you got a, a negative I, comment on that? I, I very positive. It. I want to point out <laughs> that they don't have labor unions forcing it, and there's not a minimum wage law forcing it. This is the private sector coming up with this solution that is wealth-building, entrepreneurial, aspirational. And my favorite part is that they don't require a stupid college degree. Yes, I absolutely right. love this story. <laughs> is that, is that negative? That. No, no, no. That's very positive. <laughs> I like this, David. Uh, but you brought your dividend picks with you. You're going to start with American Electric Power. Uh, it, pay? it, it pays four and a half percent and it's growing uh, high single digits every year. But I just want to point out that we don't own any utility names but this one. And I think a lot of people want some exposure to the utility sector. It was the worst performing sector last year. And at this price point, I don't think it's going to stay in the 70s for long. American Electric Power, four and a half percent dividend yield right now and gives you a best name in the utility sector. You were the guy who recommended Blackstone to me a couple of years ago, as I recall. It's done very well. You're like it again, watch the dividend now. Well, right now, if you buy it today, you're getting a 3.5% yield. But I want to say that I think it's a 30% yield. And you say, what is you already talking about? The yield they're paying out right now from when you and I bought it back in the day yeah. is 30% cash on cash of what we originally paid. That's dividend growth at work. Blackstone has a long way to go. They are the premier asset manager on Wall Street. And I got a wonderful capital gain out of it, too. Thank you, David. You passed judgment, David, on all manner of things this morning. You want to pass judgment on the border mess? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it is a crisis of leadership. I think that there has to be decisive uh, steps taken. But one thing I'll point out, because this is true of so much of our politics, people have to be willing to do things that are unpopular. And, and I think sometimes the right policy is unpopular. I feel that way about foreign policy a lot, as a lot more on the right or becoming more isolationist. But you have to do what you have to do. President Biden's afraid of being unpopular with his base, and that's really jeopardized his presidency because of the mess at the border. It certainly has. David, thank you very much. The police department and Oakland has been gutted and demoralized. They are at least 300 officers short, and they don't have a police chief, and they haven't for over a year. That's extraordinary. You've, you, wait a minute. David, you're still here. You live in California, or you used to. Actually, no. Wait a minute. You used to live in California, and you've moved to New York. It's so much better you've here. Is it so yeah. much better the, the, the crime is lower in New York than much parts of California. In fairness, you know, Newport Beach is not exactly a crime haven in California, but the situation with Oakland is well known throughout the state. It's um, a question of will. This is not anything that has to be investigated or considered or studied. We don't need PhDs or sociologists. They have decided to allow crime as a lifestyle in Oakland, period. Yeah. And and they have the ability to stop it, and they won't. And we are entitled in this country as a basic right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and they're not getting it in Oakland, and I think it's deplorable. They also do ranked choice voting, and they're not necessarily getting no. the people that they want. There is hope for 2024. Not only is there the presidential election, but the odd number council members are up for re-election. And maybe people who are living there are saying, enough is enough. We need to do this differently. Which is what New Yorkers would do. New Yorkers, over time, when they voted Republican, it's because of law and order. It it's was, because of crime. Right. And maybe that's what Oakland needs to do, is pull in New York. If they voted for Giuliani, a Republican, yeah, because right. of the crime and the right. previous administration. Thank you for joining us for the hour, David. My pleasure. Great, comp uh, great uh, contribution today. Thank, Thank you. you.